uh, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this um, icon in Adobe Illustrator from start to finish. So I'm going to go back to Illustrator and then create a new document. So I'm going to I'm going to be using a square document for this in pixels. 2000 by 2000 pixels. I'll leave the rest at default and I'll click create. Then now I need to bring in the image into Adobe Illustrator. So I'll go to my file explorer and then drag and drop this image directly in Adobe Illustrator. And then I'm going to hold shift and alt and come to this angle here to kind of resize this to maintain aspect ratio. Yeah, something like this should be fine and then i go to my hand to click and drag this this way so i can see the two of those side by side go to my selection to move this like so go back to my hand to and drag this okay that's fine so now i need to kind of create a square for this so i'll select my shape to the rectangle to come in here and then i would right click I'm going to be using something around 700 square by 700 pixels click ok to apply that so i have a shape in here so now if i go to the fill and the stroke i'm seeing now that the, the my shape has my rectangle has a stroke so i need to remove that so i'll select my stroke and click on none I'll select my fill so I'll click on that and then pick a color in there for my color picker let me use this dark gray click ok i'll go back to my selection to kind of move this to the center of the documents kind of resize this a bit more or resize this like so so this in here i'll come to the edge i'll click and drag so that will apply to the entire shape or to the to, the, to every edge but if I do that, let's say I want to control each and every single corner radius for that, I can go to my direct selection to click and draw a selection around that point. Then when I click on the put my mouse cursor on the white dot, I can drag that. It's, it really influence only that edge. So I won't do that. I'll go back to my selection to I'll click out. Then I'll go back and click in. And then I can do this now uniformly. Something like this should be fine. So now I'm going to go to my shape tools. I need to create an ellipse. Select an ellipse. I'll put my mouse cursor on the center of this shape. I'll kind of find it until I see the text written the center. Then I can click, hold my right, um, can hold my right, my left mouse click, and draw. Then I hold Shift and Alt to kind of get something. That is a circle out of this. So something like this is fine. Okay. I'll release my mouse cursor before releasing the shift and alt. I'll change the color of this. I can come up here to the fill and give this a different color. So now so what I'm going to do next is I'll go back to my selection tool. I'll select these two shapes. And I'll go to Pathfinder. Now if you can't find your Pathfinder, just go all the way to Window. Then you can find it down here. See Pathfinder. Okay. Then I'm going to use the divide. I'll click on the divide. Click on divide. So that would divide and both minus the shape from the other shape. Then I'll click out and then I'll click again on the shape. Right click on it and click on group. Click out. And I can click on this. If I move this out, I move this holding shift. I'll drag then hold shift to move it in a straight line. Now I have a hole in there, that's fine. So I'll control Z to be put that back. So now I need to make a copy of this. I will click drag hold alt to make a copy and hold shift to move that in a straight line. Now select this. I'll swap the colors from the fill to the stroke, swap fill and stroke. Then I need to come to the stroke in here and use a different shade of that go to the thickness of that stroke I'll increase that to around 40 
maybe i'll use something around 50 should be fine okay let me use 60 for this so now it's on 60 i think 60 is just way too much i'm going to stick with 50 for now so i have that in there now i'm going to select this shape click and drag holding alt to make a copy of this again put this at the center like so i'll go shift and alt click and drag to resize this something around so maybe a bit more down like so then i'll change the color of that i'll change the color to maybe gray so now i have this in here now so now the mini shapes is just to kind of fix this colored shape in there so see this is what i'm going to do i'm going to select this shape this copy and click and drag that out a bit more a bit bigger than this like so and i'll come to the swap this to stroke I'll come in here let me use a different color for this i'll come to the stroke thickness and i'll put that around 80 it means around 100 should be fine or a bit more than that if i want to maybe 150 then i would resize this like so then i'll click and drag this holding shift to drag it back to the center of this shape so now i need to kind of resize this a bit more once it closes that white gap something like this is fine you can see then i need to right click on there and go to arrange and i will send to back so it's to go to the last layer so now it's on the last layer so i have everything all set now i'm, I'm, re I'm ready to go so i will select this bigger shape select this brown one select this select old shift and select this old shift and select this and kind of drag those out holding shift to drag those out something like this not control minus to zoom out let me move this holding shift to the other direction like so i'll come here and drag this out Control zero to fit screen Control minus to zoom out go to my hand tool and pull this out like so go to my zoom tool click and draw a selection to kind of zoom into that region so something like this is fine now this is what i'm going to do i'm going to select this shape i need to convert this shape from a stroke to a fill so i go to object to convert this into a fill so i expand this i'll drag this out i'll click ok on this so now i need to divide it into various pieces so i can give them their individual colors so i have one two and three one two three so i'm going to kind of go to my pen tool to draw straight lines so i'm going to kind of move this around here as you can see that purple line is, is indicating that i'm in the center of the shape i'll just click go in here holding shift to draw a straight line and i'll click again and hit enter to accept that so backspace to delete that extra point i created so now as you can see now i have this shape in here i have that part in there so now i need to make another one for the edge here and for this edge here so using the same process i come around here as maybe around here should be fine i would click drag this out and click enter to apply that go back to my selection to go back to my pen to i need one in here directly on the center i'll click hold down shift and click enter to apply that going back to my pen to do the same thing here also i would 
Okay, I want to count, count this. I have one, so I need two and three. So I need one more. So I'll click, drag this out, and click enter to apply that. Go back to my move to. I'll click and draw a selection, draw a selection around both of these. Kind of make a duplicate out of this, put this around here. So I didn't hold alt. You need to hold alt by dragging this out to make a copy out of this. Yeah, something like this is fine. So I'll be copying here as a back copy in case, in case anything goes wrong. So now select this piece, this part. I go to objects, I go to parts, and I'll click on divide object below. Okay, that's fine. I'll select the next one. Go to parts. Repeat that same process, divide object below. Now there might be an issue. So let's just carry on. Let's see. If there's an issue, I'm going to explain why the issue is and I'll show you how to fix it. Okay. This is there are no issues, which is cool. I go to objects, parts for the final piece, divide objects below. So now if I should select this, I'll right click, I'll click on group, I'll click out, I'll select this piece also. Okay, select this piece. Now I only need half of this. So I'll delete this half. So now I have this piece broken up into separate piece okay okay so i have one two and three i have three of these to kind of fill in this color so i'm going to do that now i'm going to fill the colors out now so selecting this i'll go to my eyedropper tool and i'll pick the green with my selection to select the next shape and I think I kind of made a mistake there. I kind of cut out too much in here. But it doesn't really matter. I'm sure you guys can always do that accurately if you want. So I'll select this color. And for the final piece, I'll go to my eyedropper to and select this. And then in case I want to kind of fix that a bit more, I can always fix that. I can just select this parts. Or better still, I'll just go and go to my pen tool and draw a part right about here, something like so, around here, and I'll click enter to apply that. Go to my selection to objects, divide parts below. I'll select this. Now I'm going to combine those two shapes as one shape, so let me zoom into it. I go to my selection tool. Now I have that other piece in here. So I will select these two pieces and I'll click on, on the path finder unite. Then I can change the colors now. So I'll zoom out, control minus to zoom out. I go to the hand tool and kind of pull this out to get the other color from with my eyedropper tool. So as you can see, it's an easy easy fix. Then I will select these two shapes the entire shape rather then i'll right click on this and i'll go to transform and click on reflect so i want to have a copy of this at the other side so i'll turn on the preview i'll leave that vertical and i'll click copy and i'll drag that copy holding shift so it's kind of snap when it gets to the edge something like this then i can kind of give them their individual colors so selection two again, select this piece, I drop out to and I'll pick this color. Select this piece. I'll pick this color. Then for the final piece, I'll select this. I drop out and I'll pick this color. So now I, I don't have any use for this anymore. So I can just I can just delete this. And just del delete this then i would bring back the other shape bring back the other shape so i use my hand to drag this out 
so i still need to make sure this entire shape are at the back so i'll right click i'll go to arrange and i'll click send to back one more time select these shapes i'll click and drag holding and shift and drag this back to the center as you can see that's fine so i definitely need to to increase let me select this shape okay need to get this shape okay that one i'll go to objects i'll go to i need to convert this into a few i'll click ok it's now a fill then i'm going to increase that a bit increase the size a bit more like so okay that's way too much i think it's okay the way it is then the next step is to kind of give them their individual colors let me kind of increase this a bit more so nice to give them the gradient now so i'll pull this out i want to kind of pick the colors from the image i have in here and that's why i brought the image in here so I, I, i'm going to be including the image on the link on my channel on this particular video so carrying on i'm going to select this bigger piece i'll come down here i'll you need to make sure your fill is the one on top and you click on gradients so now you have white to black so if, if you kind of observe the image properly you would notice that the darker shade the darker shade is kind of down here and the lighter shade is up here so since i already have white and black in here i can just fix that before applying the actual colors so i go to my gradient tool then i'll click and drag it down somewhere like this so the black should kind of fall down here then i can begin to select the actual colors in there so i would click out go to my selection tool and click out then go to my eyedropper tool and pick this gray shade here i'll click on those then i'll go to the fill double click on the fill and copy the x code click ok go back to my selection tool select this shape then i'll go to the gray i'll double click on the dark shade on the color stop on the color stop i'll click on this menu and i'll click on rgb so it's only this this rgb ch channel that allows me to paste in my x, x code if you're working with the other channels you won't be able to see the x code so let me just show you guys i'll double click I come in here if i choose the u saturation and brightness you can find the x the um, tab to kind of input your x code same thing also with the color mode cymk there's no tab to include your x code only on the rgb you find a tab to include your x code so i have that in there now so the other color is just white i'm going to leave that as it is okay so now for the center piece still the same color i'll go to my dropper to and just select the color from the back shape and use my gradients to and kind of draw click and draw something that flows down maybe something like this should be fine okay now for this shape i think i need to make this kind of thicker it needs to be it needs to be thicker than this so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go to my appearance appearance is down here if you can't find the appearance let's go to the window i want to add more layers of thickness to this stroke so i'll go to appearance so i need to add some layers of thickness to this if you can't find your appearance go to window then you click on appearance so i have this here now so i want to kind of add another layer of thickness to this so i'm going to be adding a stroke so i'll add this new stroke so that stroke i'm going to be giving it maybe 18. as you can see it gets thicker maybe let me just leave this at 20. then i need to kind of expand this again so i will select it objects expand appearance okay and i'll go to pathfinder and unite this to make it one full or complete shape so i go to the fill sweep that sweep back to fill 
So now I have a multi-car shaping there to work with. I can also use the same color also. I'll go to my eyedropper tool and select this color. Go to the gradient tool. As you can see, it's having a darker shade at the top. The darker shade at the top. The darker shade up here. Lighter shade down here. So I want to kind of imitate the same thing. So I would go back in there. Go to my gradient tool. Now my gradient tool is locked. It, it refuses to work. Let me see if I can okay. So the best way to fix it without using the gradient tool here because it's kind of locked for some reason. Let me go back to objects. I click on expand. I'll click okay. Shape. I go to my gradient tool one more time. Uh, still is not working. So let's do this instead. Go to your gradient tool. Can you undo that? Can you undo that? I need to undo that. Click on the fill. Apply gradients. Yeah, I think I can adjust that now. So I'll do this. I'll click and drag this down like so. Clicking out. I need to reverse this color. So I'll click on reverse. Reverse that, and I can see the shade nice, nice on top. Okay, then these colors are in there already, so it's not to create these shapes. The shape you see in here, and then when this shape is kind of casting a shadow behind that, behind this. So, but let me kind of fix those circles. So, I'll go select an ellipse, draw out something like this. Go to my eyedropper tool and pick this color. Okay, I picked the color now, so I'm going to go to my selection tool. Now I need to lock. I need to lock lock all of this. I need to lock this. I lock this. I'll go to the layers. I click on the drop down arrow and then I'll just lock everything from down here. Now select this shape. I'll drag this in here. So I need to zoom in. I need to zoom in. So I need to zoom in. I'll click and drag the selection to zoom in. So I need this. I need this shape to be behind this shape, and this one down here, but on top of this. So I would um, right click on it and I'll choose go to arrange and I'll click on send send back send backward not send to back send to back to send to the last layer. To send backward, you take it one step backward. You can see, I think one more. Yeah, as you can see, it's in there now. I'm gonna move this like this. Control zero to fit screen. So I have that shape in there now. So while I'm here, I want to kind of create the, create the background. So I'm kind of, kind of draw a rectangle that kind of covers this page. Rectangle like so. I'll go to my eyedropper to uh, select this color like so. I'll double click in here. I'll pick this color, copy the code, apply gradients. I'll change this to radar. Now, let me go in here and choose so you can see what's going on. So, on radar, you have it kind of glowing out. Something like this is fine. I would drag this more. Okay, that's too much. It's back. I would double click on this and paste in the code. I would click this and come in here. When you see a plus sign with an arrow, you click to make a copy of that. Click and drag this down to delete that. Drag this to the edge. Now I have a darker shade in there. That's fine. Now I'll go to my selection to right click and I'll choose arrange send to back. Now you can see the icon popping out now, which is cool. So I'm going to select. So I want to lock this background so I don't move that as accidentally. So I'll drag this down. It should be behind. This is the last shape there. 
As you can see this indicator here is telling me the particular shape that's been selected. So it's definitely this. I'll lock this. So now I can't move that anymore because it's locked. So I would select this old alt, old shift, drag this down like so. I'll go to my edge row pattern. I'll click, select that color. And select the bright tone of that. Click out. I'll select this and select this. I would rotate. Click put my mouse cursor outside so you can see the two double arrow. Rotate this and I'll hold out while rotating this. Like so. Okay. It didn't make any copy for me, so I would um, I would click on edit, copy, click on edit, and I click paste in front. So it's been in the same place, in the same position. So since 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 it's still there, I can just rotate this like so. At the center, kind of in that line. At the center of that is fine. I'll go to edit edit again. Copy, edit, paste in front, and I'll go at the edge and rotate this. So I have something like this. I'll click out, so now I'll select this shape. I'll go to my eyedropper tool and pick the color. Selection tool, select this shape. Go to my eyedropper tool and pick this color. Selection tool, select this shape. I need to move this out so I can see the color of the other piece. I drop out to I pick this color. Selection to select this color. I drop out to and pick this. So now I need to add some shadow to this center piece. You can see it's casting shadow down here. If I open the full image, you can see it's casting shadow around here. So I need to add the drop shadow to this shape. So selecting that shape, selecting this shape. Oh, it's locked. It's locked. I need to unlock that. So I would just unlock all this. Click and drag to unlock that. But lock the background. Now I can select. I think. Okay, unlock this and unlock this. Now I can select that shape. I'll go to effects, stylize, drop shadow. If I do that, I want to kind of zoom into it. So I cl click on the zoom to click and drag a selection there. Go back to selection to select that shape. Effects, stylize, drop shadow. Then you turn on the preview. Take a little moment to load. Now you can see the shadow picking now down here. So it's kind of match this now. You know, should be push this down like so. Go to the X and push this in this direction. I'll blow that, blow that a bit more. That's way too much. Click on O to reduce that number. Yeah, this is fine. I'll reduce the blur opacity that is the visibility of the blur i'll click ok ctrl zero to zoom out i'll select the shape kind of center this select the shape delete this so now i can go to file and save this as jpeg export as then my desktop is on jpeg already that's fine and i'll just click export and then drag this out, increase the quality all the way up. I'll leave the resolution at 150 ppi. I'll click OK. So now we're done with this. So that's so our finished look. Open the finished design. Control Windows E. Go to my desktop. So our final design looks like this as you can see pretty neat so i'll see you guys in the next lesson